Anawak Sports Live is brought to you by Anawak Florist. Anawak National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Capital Farm Credit. Community Christian Fellowship Church. Chambers County Abstract Company. Coastal Field Services, LLC. Four Corner Tires. Gator Garage. Jerry Seafood Incorporated. Julia Luna Real Estate. KMAX Services. Porter's Wild Game Processing and Alligator Farm. Rebecca Lynn Photography. Amber Villarreal, Insurance Agent with State Farm. Third Coast Martial Arts. The Oak Island Double Bayou VFD Turkey Shoot. Swanky Insurance Agency. Title Services Incorporated. Trinity Bay RV Park and Lodging. Turan Lawn Care. Hillary Otto, Insurance Agent with Texas Farm Bureau. Turn to Specialty Companies. And Wilcox Drugstore in Enoa. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Anawak Sports Live, where we're high atop the catbird seat, as my partner Alex Altram would say, here at Wildcat Stadium in Kirbyville, where it is senior night, and we are getting ready for Friday Night Lights once again for week seven of Texas high school football. Again, ladies and gentlemen, Trent Hart here, along with Fort Terry Fordenberry up doing the camera duties tonight, and uh, my partner Alex Altram was unable to make it because of some, some work things that he had to take care of, but nonetheless, we are going to do the absolute best we can as far as I'm concerned, uh, calling the play-by-play -play and giving you guys the uh, best broadcast that we possibly can tonight just to let everybody know that we are on cell phone signal. So there might be some interruptions here and there. So far, so good. It looks like the uh, stream is coming through pretty good. Uh, if you have any problems as far as audio or video, just uh, leave a comment in the chat. We'll try to work on those in between quarters or at halftime or something like that. But we appreciate everybody sticking through anything that might happen tonight, and we appreciate everybody joining us for the Texas Farm Bureau pregame show. Last week, the Anahuac Panthers uh, hosted Orangefield, and, uh, you know, the Panther offense struggled to find their rhythm last week, um, especially on the ground when trying to run the football. Uh, you know, passing wasn't near, um, you know, the problem. They just could not get into the end zone once they got into uh, Orangefield territory or into the red zone. Uh, but the Panther offense this year so far has put up big numbers. One of the highest scoring teams in the area. As you can see, 1,400 passing yards, almost 1,200 rushing yards, 25-83 total offensive yards and 31 touchdowns. <coughs> Pardon me. But the Anahuac offense is very high powered. We didn't quite get to see that last week as the, uh, the Panthers just kind of struggled. It just seemed like they were off of their game last week, but I'm sure that Coach Greg Neese and his staff Worked on some of those things this week during practice and probably going to right the ship. Speaking of the offense, you can't uh, leave out talking about freshman quarterback Bray Barrier. Number five, he's got 91 completions out of 152 pass attempts, 1,386 yards through the air, 14 touchdowns, and only still only one interception, which gives him almost 118 quarterback rating which is phenomenal in, in high school football. I mean, there's probably a lot of high school quarterbacks out there that uh, probably have a higher rating than that, but they're also probably juniors or seniors at this point. So for the freshman quarterback, he's having an excellent year so far. And last week we talked about, you know, the, the sophomore impact on the Panther offense and what they've been able to do uh, and to help this team. From the backfield, Camden Wilson – like I said, they couldn't get quite get their rhythm on the ground last week. But uh, Camden, he has 54 rushes, 486 yards, and four touchdowns. And, uh, you know, that averages out to nine yards a carry, which is good at any level. Uh, and he also tacks on six receptions for 93 yards and another touchdown. The other running back, the sophomore as well, is Thomas Dello. Uh, 39 rushes, 242 yards, three touchdowns. He's averaging just over six yards a carry, and he also has five catches for 120 yards. 
But uh, not sure if uh, running back Landon Corbett will be back into the game this week. I think he practiced some a little bit last week, or during this week, excuse me. Um, had a little trouble with a, a shoulder sprain. But uh, if he is back tonight, it should help the, the Panther backfield quite a bit, and not to mention in the secondary on defense. But uh, kind of a slow year for Landon from the injury setbacks that he's had so far. 56 rushes, 410 yards. He also has 10 receptions for 207 yards. He has uh, 617 total combined yards between the two and seven touchdowns. And that's with missing two games already this year. But a little bit back to the, the, the sophomores. Talon Cunningham has had a great year so far. Um, usually before last week, he was getting about one or two receptions per game, and they were, per, per game, and they were big receptions. As you can see, he's averaging over 20 yards per reception, 11 on the year, 229 yards. Last, year, last week was his biggest uh, week of the year so far, had a little bit over 100 yards receiving. So, you know, and also another sophomore that is contributing in a big way, big way from the wideout spot. And Quandre Coates, you know, from the tight end position, he's, he's – had a little bit of slow week last week. Like I said, couldn't quite get the tight ends involved uh, from Coates and from uh, Big Rob Bailey. But uh, Quandre has 28 receptions, 393 yards, and seven touchdowns, 14 yards per reception. So even with last week's kind of slow start for him, he is also having a great year. But as far as the Panther defense, you know, when, when they went up against Orangefield last week, the slot teed run attack from Orangefield, you know, they played havoc on the Panthers, caught them a lot on their heels. Uh, the quick misdirection plays and the rushes played uh, mostly in the Orangefield favor uh, for most of the game, especially the second half, as the Panthers were, you know, biting on where to go to the football, and they weren't really swarming to it. Um, tonight, that defense is going to be facing a, a run attack that's not – a quick, similar attack to Orangefield's, but they got two good running backs here in Kirbyville that they're going to have to do a better job of swarming to the football. Um, as far as penalties go, we talk about that each and every week. And uh, the Panthers definitely cleaned that up last week, more, more so than they had the previous weeks. Um, I didn't get a chance to get down on the field and interview Coach Nice uh, because we were – getting ready up here in the booth and making sure everything was running smoothly for you guys. But uh, I'm sure he'd be the first to tell you that uh, penalties is one of the things that are always on his mind and always reminding his his kids that, uh, you know, to, to win football games, they got to play, play clean football and mistake-free mistake football. So I'm sure that uh, we'll, we'll see more of that here tonight. I'm sure we're going to see a lot more, you know, aggressiveness on the football field, especially on the defensive side, swarming to the football. Uh, they're going to have to play smash mouth football to, to really, you know, get out here in front early uh, because the Kirbyville offense and their run attack will wear defenses down. But as far as Kirbyville goes, 1-5 uh, and five so far in 2022. Their only win coming from Trinity in week one. They lost to East Chambers last week, 36-16. to 16. Um, Coming back from last year on the offense, they've got six returners. And on the defense, they have three. In 2021, they were four and five. As be looking out for number nine senior running back, Talon Alfred. He is a very strong runner. He has got great speed, and he's definitely hard to bring down. Um, the working opposite of him uh, in the dual head monster that they have is number four senior running back, uh, Azion Mahathe. And he's another quick runner, and he's also very hard to bring down. As I was watching some of the film this week, um, definitely, you know, East Chambers had a tough time with both of those runners. But uh, Curryville, they did play East Chambers very well, especially in the first half last week. Um, you know, they will pass on an occasion, especially in a, yard, a long yardage situation where they have to get a first down on third. But uh, as far as their defense is concerned, another 3-4 defense. The NY Panthers saw a 3-4 defense last, year, last week against Orangefield. But uh, I would have to say that the uh, Curryville defense is a little bit vulnerable on the pass attack, which is going to work in, in Brady Barrier's fa favor. 
as well as some of our wideouts and to get our tight ends into the football game. Other than that, we've got about 10 minutes left to go. I'm going to take our first break, but we'll be back here shortly with the Texas Farm Bureau pregame show right after this on Anahuac Sports Live. Whatever it is you wrangle, whatever seeds you sow, no matter what you nurture or what you choose to grow, at Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, we're proud to protect all Texans. Sports Live is brought to you by Anahuac Florist, Anahuac National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender, Capital Farm Credit, Community Christian Fellowship Church, Chambers County Abstract Company, Coastal Field Services, LLC, Four Corner Tires, Gator Garage, Jerry Seafood Incorporated, Julia Luna Real Estate, KMAX Services, Porter's Wild Game Processing and Alligator Farm, Rebecca Lynn Photography, Amber Villarreal, Insurance Agent with State Farm, Third Coast Martial Arts, The Oak Island Double Bayou VFD Turkey Shoot, Wonky Insurance Agency, Title Services Incorporated, Trinity Bay RV Park and Lodging, Turan Lawn Care, Hillary Otto Insurance Agent with Texas Farm Bureau, Turn 2 Specialty Companies, and Wilcox Drugstore in Anawa. Anahuac Sports Live is brought to you by Anahuac Florist. Anahuac National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Capital Farm Credit. Community Christian Fellowship Church. Chambers County Abstract Company. Coastal Field Services, LLC. Four Corner Tires. Gator Garage. Jerry Seafood Incorporated, Julia Luna Real Estate, KMAX Services, Porter's Wild Game Processing and Alligator Farm, Rebecca Lynn Photography, Amber Villarreal, Insurance Agent with State Farm, Third Coast Martial Arts, The Oak Island Double Bayou VFD Turkey Shoot, Wonky Insurance Agency, Title Services Incorporated, Trinity Bay RV Park and Lodging, Turan Lawn Care, Hillary Otto Insurance Agent with Texas Farm Bureau, Turn 2 Specialty Companies, and Wilcox Drugstore in Anahuac.
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Anahuac Sports Live at Wildcat Stadium here in Kirbyville, Texas, as we get ready to kick things off here tonight for Friday Night Lights as the Anahuac Panthers invade and take on the Kirbyville Wildcats as both teams start to make their way onto the field. As I mentioned earlier, thank you to uh, Hillary Auto Insurance Agent with Texas Farm Bureau for sponsoring the pregame show. You can visit Hillary or give her a call at 936-402-2164 or you can give her an email at hotto, H-O-T-T-O, at txfb-ins.com. But as I mentioned in the pregame, the Anahuac Panthers looking to bounce back from their tough loss to Orangefield from last week as they're wanting to establish the offense early here and try to get their rhythm that they couldn't find last week. And defensively, they're going to have to run the two hand, or they're going to have to handle the two handed monster of Kirbyville, which consists of Alfred and Mahathe. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we are working off of cell phone signal tonight, so if you experience inter any interruptions in the video or the audio feed, um, just be patient. It should return. Right now, everything seems to be working smoothly. If you have any issues on your end or if you're not hearing us or whatever the case may be, please let us know in the chat, and we'll try to get those fixed as we go. Oh, and a little bit of a collision <laughs> down on the sideline early. I hope she's okay. As the Curryville Wildcats are now on the field. And now here comes the Anahuac Panthers. Anahuac in their white jerseys, white helmets tonight, black pants. Instead of the white pants that we normally see on the road. Curryville all black. Helmets, jerseys, and pants with the red trim. Not sure what the uh, volleyball results are here in Kirbyville quite yet, but as soon as we get those, we'll update everybody as well. Uh, if you have anybody that can't particularly watch the game here on YouTube, uh, the radio broadcast on setx.com, you can go over there and get the radio broadcast here from Kirbyville tonight. That's in case somebody out there doesn't have YouTube necessarily on their TV or whatever the case may be. However, we appreciate everybody being here right here on our YouTube channel. If you haven't gotten a chance, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell as we go down to the field for the playing of our national anthem.
great rendition of our nation, national anthem by the Kirbyville Wildcat Band as both teams come to midfield for the coin toss. Captains for the Kirbyville Wildcats, number 34, J.C. White, number 51. And I don't have a 51 on my – that's actually number 61, excuse me, Branson Williams. And number 58, John Loomis. Captains for the Panthers, number 72, Jonathan Cooper. Number seven, Landon Corbett. And looking to see who else is out there. Looks like number two, Rob Bailey. Actually, number four, Presley Mouton, the other captain for the Panthers. The Panthers won the toss. They elect to receive. As we get set and to get underway here at Wildcat Stadium. I'm sure the Anahuac Panthers definitely got a reality check from last week, one to come in and get things started really quickly on their first possession. And we'll see if they try to get the run game established tonight as they were not able to last week, as I mentioned earlier. I want to thank the Oak Island Double Bayou Volunteer Fire Department 50, 50th Annual Turkey Shoot for sponsoring the scoreboard this week. That is going to be on October 15th, 11 to 4 at the Double Bayou Community Building. You can call 409-277-3345 for more information on the turkey shoot. Always lots of fun. Back deep to receive for the Panthers is number six, Javion West. And number two, K.J. Moore. And getting set to kick it away from Kirbyville is number 55, Luke Hacker. The kick is away, end over end, low kick. Fielded at the 15, taken out by Moore. Makes a couple of moves and finally brought down at the 32. So that's where the Panthers will start their first possession of the first quarter. So first and 10 from the Panther 32. Shotgun formation, three wide, two to the far side. Barrier in the pistol. Sends Corbett in motion, trying to set up the screen. Goes over the middle and in and out of the hands of Thomas Delo. As the quick pass over the middle. Delo unable to haul it in, but he had plenty of space in front of him. Only one man will bring up second down and ten. Kind of faked me out as Corbett was going out to the far side. Thought they were going to set up the screen, and Barrier decided to quickly throw it over the middle as the Panthers come back to the line. This time under center is Barrier. Corbett and Dello behind him pitches it to, to Corbett. Corbett trying to look to the outside. Doesn't get much, maybe three. That's what they're going to give him. Bring up third down and seven. Quickly back to the line. Lone back this time is Delo. Delo going to the far side this time. Falling forward and close to the out of bounds and near the first down marker. But it's going to bring up fourth and short as he was unable to get it. Actually, the, they're motioning it. He got the first down. So good run there by Delo to get the first down for the Panthers. Quickly back in the Kirbyville 
Wildcats not biting on that one, getting into the backfield for a loss. And they went to Dela O again on that play. Loss of what looks like three. It'll be second and 13 from the 38-yard line. Shotgun this time. Tuned to the near side. Brady looking to pass. It sets, does so. Set up the screen to Corbett. Corbett's got the first down and then some. Out of bounds inside Curryville territory around the 49-yard line. So first down, Panthers, and they keep on scooting the ball down the field in Wildcat territory for the first time tonight. They're actually saying that he stepped out at the 41. Move back to Corbett. Corbett spins out of one, tries to get back to the line of scrimmage, dives forward past the 40. Going to be a gain of two, second down and eight. So Corbett definitely getting in some work here tonight coming off of the shoulder injury. Good to see him back into the mix of things. Pistol formation this time. Trips to the near side. Snap his back. Barrier quickly passing to, to Bailey. Bailey trying to get out of one tackle. He's going to lose a yard on it. And they're actually going to lose two. Back to the, almost the original line of scrimmage, and it will bring up third down and ten. So far, the Kirbyville defense doing a great job of sniffing out the flat passes. And have gotten into the backfield a couple of times already. Definitely got some big bodies on the Kirbyville Wildcat defensive front. So pistol once again, too wide. Sends Corbett in motion. Fakes to him, turns around, flips it to Cunningham. Cunningham's got a good block here on the near side, coming up this down sideline and out of bounds at what looks like the 26-yard line. That'll be enough for the first down, and the Panthers move the chains once again. Let me know if y'all can hear me good and clear on your end. Sometimes the uh, audio capture doesn't work like we want to, like we were <laughs> doing last week. Under center now is Barrier. Barrier's going to give it off to Corbett. Corbett's got some blockers. He looks for a hole, cuts up one. He's inside the 10 all the way in to pay dirt. Touchdown, Panthers. So wasting no time going to Landon Corbett from around 20, I want to say he was around 25 yards out. Swinging gate formation goes back. They're going to try to attempt the field goal, uh, the PAT, excuse me. Snap his back, hold his down, kick is up. It is through and true. So with 8.37 remaining in the first quarter, the NY Panthers strike here in Kirbyville first. Seven to nothing. We'll be back here shortly on Anawag Sports Live. From custom processing, professional guided hunts, high tanning, and gator merchandise, Porter's Processing and Alligator Farm offers a personal experience like no other. Locally owned and operated in Anawag, Texas since 1987, Porter's has been Southeast Texas' premier choice for any hunting adventure need. Now offering full service processing of gator, deer, beef, hogs, and other wild game, make Porter's Processing this hunting season's one-stop shop. Visit them today at portersprocessing.com or call 409-267-8413. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Anahuac Sports Live. Trent Hart here in Kermyville, Texas, as the Anahuac Panthers have scored on their very first possession to go ahead of the Wildcats 7 to nothing. Kick is away. End over end, fielded at the 12. 
And going to be taken out to around the 30. Still looking to see who came up with the return for Kirbyville. I can't quite make out that particular number, but a good return and decent field positions for the Wildcats for their first possession of the ball game. 8.31 remaining in the first quarter. As number 12, Jace Huffman, quarterback for Kirbyville, comes in with the play. Handoff up the middle to Mahathe. Mahathe gets past the front line and dives forward for a good gain of about what looks like eight. And that's what he does pick up. It'll bring up second down and two for the Wildcats. As I said earlier, the Wildcats have two main runners that they use, Mahathe and Alfred. So Huffman under center, one back. Puts a man in motion. Going to pitch it to Alfred this time. Alfred's met quickly at the line, but gets away, fights hard, and gets the first down for, for the Wildcats. Good hit up front by Jonathan Cooper, but unable to wrangle down the hard-hitting Taylor and Alfred. So first and 10 from the Kirbyville 41. One receiver to the far side. Looking to pass. Caught up under pressure in the backfield, and that's going to be a loss on the play. As Huffman had nowhere to go with it. And it looks like a loss of one from what the side judge is standing second down and 11. Single back this time for the Wildcats. One receiver to the far side. Fakes one handoff and it's the end of round. And brought down in the backfield for a huge loss is Garrett Dye, who really made a great pursuit there to bring down Mahathe. So another loss of about eight will bring up third down and 20. Journey Jones for just subscribing to our Anawag Sports Live YouTube channel. Back to pass again. Throws it up in the air, looking for somebody and broken up by Javion West. So good coverage there by the Anawag Panther cornerback or the secondary. I don't know what uh, Javion's playing here tonight on defense. It looks like he is playing the safety position, but it'll bring up fourth down and a punt from the Wildcats. Pass intended for number 21, Brent Garner. As Huffman had nowhere to go with that particular football, very well covered by the NY Panther defense. Cunningham back to deep to receive a high snap. Falls at the five inside of it, looking to try to make something out of nothing as the Panthers swarm him. And the Panthers are going to take over with a turnover on downs close to the goal line. That was Rob Bailey back there amongst them. quite a few other white Anahuac jerseys. Ball placed at the four-yard line. And the Anahuac Panthers catching a big break there from the high snap.
So Barrier coming under center. Corbett the lone back. Going to pitch it to him. Corbett looking here to the near side. Going to get into the end zone easily. Touchdown, Anahuac. So Landon Corbett with both touchdowns on the ground tonight. Swingate once again from the Panthers. Direct snap to Barrier, and they tries to pitch it back, but it's caught in the backfield by Kirbyville. As Kirbyville was not going to have any of the trickeration from the Panthers. So the two-point conversion is no good, but with 523 remaining in the set or in the first quarter, the Anahuac Panthers lead the Wildcats 13-0 on your Oak Island Double Bayou Turkey Shoot scoreboard. We'll be back here shortly on Anahuac Sports Live. Building a new home? Does your driveway need that long overdue facelift? Are you just looking to finally get your lot cleared and ready to build something great? Look no further and trust the locally owned and operated professionals at Title Services Incorporated. No need to hire multiple contractors. Title Services does all phases of residential and commercial land clearing, house pads, ponds, dirt and rock delivery, and demolition. Now we're back because I'm not sure if there was a flag on the play. I think there might have been. So there could have been a flag on the attempted two-point. As the NY Panthers will come back out and try it again. So barrier under center. Going to give it to Dela O. Dela O cuts it back inside into the end zone. The two-point conversion this time is good. So now with 523 remaining in the first quarter, it's the Anahuac Panthers 15, the Kirbyville Wildcats 0. We'll be back after this short break on Anahuac Sports Live. Building a new home? Does your driveway need that long overdue facelift? Are you just looking to finally get your lot cleared and ready to build something great? Look no further and trust the locally owned and operated professionals at Title Services Incorporated. No need to hire multiple contractors. Title Services does all phases of residential and commercial land clearing, house pads, ponds, dirt and rock delivery, and demolition. Call for a free estimate, 409-267-1057, or visit them on Facebook at Title Services, Inc. So after the high snap on the fourth down punt, Attempt by Kirbyville. The Anahuac Panthers able to recover it inside the five. Punch it in for another six points. And then the two-point conversion is good, which makes the score 15 to nothing Anahuac. Here with five minutes and 23 seconds remaining. The kick is muffed, and it's caught finally and picked up by number three of the Wildcats, Ryan Nation, as the kick got in and out of the hands of one of the Kirbyville returners. But the Wildcats able to recover. And we'll have it first down and 10 from the 25. Make that the 26. Wildcats on their first position had one first down and then had quick three downs and had to punt it away and that's when the high snap happened. Huffman's handing it off to Mahathe. Mahathe trying to stiff arm a couple and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Going to be a no gain second down and ten. Looks like the Anahuac Panther defense definitely has made some adjustment for their run defense as they were against Orangefield last week, which is definitely a good thing to see. As Huffman under center, Alfred and Mahathe doing a little shift to the near side. Going to give it to Alfred. Alfred has blockers in front of him and wrapped up quickly by number 21, Kai Till, to bring him down for a Looks like maybe a gain of one. 
but not much doing on that particular run. It'll be third down and nine. Now for the Wildcats. So third and nine from the 27. Shotgun formation this time, two wide. Sends Nation in motion. Huffman looking to pass, goes over the middle, overthrown, and hits the grass. Incomplete, fourth down coming, and another punt for the Wildcats. So Cunningham back deep to receive once again. Looks like Myers set to kick it off. Better snap this time. Punt is away. High kick, fair caught by Cunningham at the 45. And they'll actually put it at the 46, and that's where the Panthers will start their third possession of the football game. at the 46. So first and 10 from the 46. Pistol formation. Barrier fakes the handoff, looking to pass. Turns around, rolling right. Looks to give it away, and he's got Quandre Coates here close to midfield. Pushed out of bounds at the 38. That'll be a gain of two. Second down and eight. Pitch to Corbett this time. Corbett to the outside, cuts it back through the middle. Gets away from a couple of tackles and finally brought down in Curryville territory at what looks like the 38-yard line. Timeout being called on the field by Curryville. We're going to take it with them. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back right after this. Since 1948, Wilcox Drugstore has been the Anahuac area's most experienced and trusted pharmacy. Continuing its long-lasting reputation for personal attention to all your medical needs, Wilcox Drugstore offers counsel, refills, transfers, compounding, flu shots, and delivery. Visit pharmacist Dave Wilcox and his experienced staff today at 1208 Miller Street in Anahuac or call 409-267-6141. Wilcox Drugstore, delivering solutions, delivering confidence. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. 2.56 remaining in the first quarter. The Anahuac Panthers leading it 15 to nothing over Kirbyville. Or they're in the Kirbyville territory once again. First and 10 from the 34-yard line. Barrier coming under center this time. Corbett the lone back. Fakes it to Corbett. Looking to set up a screen to Cunningham. Cunningham is brought down in the backfield for a loss. That's going to be a loss of six. We'll bring up second down and 16. So far, the short passes to around the numbers on the field have uh, been covered very well by the Wildcat defense. Cunningham and Bailey wide this time. Shotgun formation for Barrier. Barrier hands it off to Corbett, fakes the throw while he's at it. Corbett brought down pretty quick after a gain of four. Make that a gain of two. 
And actually a gain of three to bring up third down and 13. Clock continuing to run under two minutes now. So pistol formation this time, three wide. Barrier looking to pass, looks to his left, goes deep to Cunningham, making the adjustment and caught in bounds for the first down and then some inside the 20. A great pass and catch there from Barrier to Cunningham to move the chains. As the Panthers come back quickly to the line, Corbett, the lone back, going to pitch it to him. Leaps over one and able to fall forward for, I thought, one. He actually got back to the line of scrimmage. So bring up second down and 10 from the 17 yard line. Under a minute, play clock at 30. They'll be able to get one more playoff before the end of the first quarter. Barry under center, Corbett the lone back again. And off to Corbett. Corbett, stiff arms one man, gets past the first level, close to the first down, not quite getting it there. And it'll be a gain of eight. Make that seven, it'll be third down and seven, but that will bring us to the end of the first quarter. And that will do it. So at the end of the first quarter here at Wildcat Stadium, the Anahuac Panthers lead it 15 to nothing over the Wildcats. We'll be back for the second quarter right after this on Anahuac Sports Live. Want to escape to a relaxing destination on the Texas Gulf Coast? Trinity Bay RV and Lodging has just what you need. Nestled next to historic Port Anahuac Park and less than an hour east of Houston, Trinity Bay RV and Lodging has everything for your next vacation, weekend getaway, or extended stay. Offering daily, weekly, and monthly rates on 54 full hookup RV sites and 11 fully furnished cabins. Visit online today at trinitybayrvlodging.com or give them a call. First quarter of play, the NY Panthers leading it here at Wildcat Stadium, 15 to nothing over Kirbyville. Want to thank our first quarter sponsor, Capital Farm Credit at 120 Broadway in Winnie. Give them a call at 409-400-4066. Again, that was our sponsor for the first quarter, Capital Farm Credit. So as we get started here for the second quarter, third down and three. As Barry looking for the fade pass to the corner of the end zone and in and out of the hands of his intended target, Cunningham, as we got a flag coming in from the back of the end zone. Not sure if it was a legal man downfield or pass interference. We'll get the call here shortly. Looking for a call. Pass interference against Kirbyville. So it was pass interference against Kirbyville. Going to give first down and goal to the Panthers.
So half the distance to the goal will put the ball roughly I want to say the six yard line, maybe the five. So first and goal, two wide to the near side. Barrier going to hand it off to Corbett. Corbett tries to spin out of one tackle and immediately swarmed by the great run coverage by the Wildcat defense. And he's actually going to lose one or two. So just a breakdown in the offensive blocking there for the Panthers up front. Back to the line is Barrier under center. Fakes the pitch, hands off up the middle to Corbett. There's a flag on the play, which is probably going to be holding, and that one's going to come back. That is a hold against Anahuac. That's going to back them up. I'm trying to see where the – it's kind of hard to see that side of the field from where I am sitting. It's going to put them at around the 15. So after the holding call, it'll be second down and goal from the Kirbyville 15. Pistol this time for the Panthers. Barrier fakes it to Corbett. Rolling right. Hits Dela O. Dela O trying to turn it upfield and pushed out of bounds inside the one. Just shy of the touchdown. And the goal line for the Panthers was Dela O. So getting the penalty yardage back and then some. As a quarterback sneak coming for the Panthers. And that's what they do. They're trying to push forward and the Kirbyville offense, our defense, waiting for a call. And that is a touchdown, Anahuac. So Brady Barrier with the keeper up the middle to get it into the end zone for the touchdown. Only taking a minute and a half off of the clock here in the second quarter as the Panthers will attempt to go for two. Faking it up the middle, then hands off to Dela O on the near side, and he's in for two. So with 10.34 remaining in the second quarter, it is the Anahuac Panthers all over Kirbyville, 23 to nothing. We'll be back here shortly. Don't go anywhere. This is Anahuac Sports Live. Coastal Field Services, Southeast Texas go-to company for right-of-way mowing, land clearing, site preparation, industrial commercial herbicide application, and industrial commercial site ground maintenance. No matter what your property maintenance or clearing needs are, you can rely on the professionals at Coastal Field Services. For more information, call 832-900-9800 and visit them at CoastalFieldServicesLLC.com. Want to let everybody know that next week at Homecoming where East Chambers is coming to town, we'll be giving away the 300 rally towels to the first 300 AP fans coming through on the AP homestand side. Be sure to get there early to get your hands on one of the 300 rally towels that the Anahuac Sports Live will be giving away next week in Anahuac for all of the homecoming festivities as we get geared up for the Swamp Bowl. Kick is away, it's high this time, but short. Fielded at the 25, dropped, but then picked back up at the 20, trying to make something happen, and he's brought down at the 21. And that's number two on for Kirbyville. That's Zion Myers, who was able to recover it.
So Huffman brings his offense back on the field. Mahathe and Alfred, the backs, hands off up the middle to Alfred. Alfred almost gets away and finally drugged down by Ty K Kai Till across the 40. And the biggest gain for the Wildcat offense so far tonight as Alfred gaining about 18 yards on the play. Ball placed at the 41 as the Wildcats quickly come back. Same formation, handoff up the middle again. Met this time quicker. Looking to see if that was Mahathe that time on the carry, and it was. He's going to gain two, and that's generous. Let's say one. It'll be second down and nine. I want to remind everybody that we'll be here for all the halftime festivities. It is senior night here in Kirbyville, which they had their introduction of all their seniors in the pregame. Huffman hands it off to Alfred. Alfred stiff arms one man looking for room to the near side and bumped out of bounds at around, I want to say the 46, and that's where they're going to place it. And it'll bring up second down and five. Or third down and five, excuse me. So a hard fought four yards there for Alfred that time. So far the Wildcats are only one for three on third down attempts so far. And a timeout's going to be called by them to think about it a little bit. That'll be their second timeout of the first half. We're going to take it with them. We'll be back here right after this on Anahuac Sports Live. Everybody know if you want to donate to Anawag Sports Live, you can do so through Venmo, Cash App, or PayPal. You can use any of the QR codes shown on your screen or visit us at Venmo at Anawag Sports Live, Cash App, dollar sign, Anawag Sports Live, and definitely scan that QR code if you plan to use PayPal. Third down and five from the 46-yard line. Pitch to Mahathe. Mahathe tries to stiff arm and get close to midfield but I don't think he quite got enough for the first down as the referee is standing at around the 47. We'll give him a gain of two, actually placed at the 48. Bring up fourth down and three for the Wildcats. Not sending their punting unit on the field. So Huffman back under center. Going to fake it and hand it off up the middle to Mahathe. Mahathe still fighting for it. Enough for the first down and then some across into Panther territory for the first time tonight. We'll move the chains. First down, Kirbyville. So converting on fourth down, getting into Anahuac territory for the first time tonight is the Wildcat offense. As Huffman with the same formation, sending men in motion with the shift. Alfred the lone back, going to give it to him up the middle. Met quickly in the middle and brought down at the original line of scrimmage. They'll give him forward progress for a gain of one. That's Bryson Campbell in on the tackle as well as Garrett Dye.
The Wildcat this time. Handoff up the middle to Mahathe. Mahathe diving forward for a gain of – he's going to get a gain of five. And bring up third down and four. The Wildcats starting to find a little bit of rhythm, running the football, sharing duties between Alfred and Mahathe. which is what we expected and we talked about in the pregame. Huffman going to Mahathe again. Mahathe met in the backfield but able to get away. He got a good block up front and able to enough to get the first down and more inside the 30 to the 26-yard line of the Panthers. 6.25 now remaining in the first half. The thing is with about the runs, and we saw it last week with Orangefield, is that so many starts wearing down a defense, and you notice them starting to get tired, putting their hands on their hips, breathing a little bit heavier. As this is the longest possession that the Anahuac Panther defense have seen tonight. So first and 10 from the 26. Huffman under center. Gives it up the middle to Alfred. Alfred met quickly. Going to gain two. Brought down by Della O. And Presley Mouton in on the tackle. Clock continuing run, approaching 5.20 now remaining. Second and eight from the Anahuac 24. Mahathe and Alfred in the backfield. Pitches it to Mahathe. Mahathe makes a couple of moves, spins in and out. And he's going to gain about five on the, on the carry, I believe. Make that four. And bring out third down and four. Kirbyville two for four on third downs tonight. Also converted a fourth down earlier. So one receiver to the near side. Huffman under center. Going to give it to Mahathe. Mahathe once again driving his way forward. And forward progress is going to give him a gain of three. And a very fourth, very important fourth down and one coming for the Wildcats as we are under four minutes remaining here in the first half. As they definitely want to get some points on the board before they go into the locker room for halftime. So fourth and one. Huffman giving it to Mahathe. Mahathe met really quickly, trying to fall forward. And I think he did get enough for the first down. It is a very close placement. Depends on the placement, actually. They might have to bring the chains out. Looking for a call. Nothing yet. And they are. They're going to bring out the chains. This is a good hard run by Mahathay to get it close. Ball looks to be on the 16-yard line. And from up here, I think he got it. He may be a chain link short, and he is. So I would say a chain link or two away from the first down, and it is a turnover. So a big stop there by the Anahuac Panther defense to turn it over here with 3.34 remaining in the first half. 
as Kirkville was starting to find a little bit of rhythm in Anahuac territory to try and put some points on the board before they go into halftime. But unable to do so, and it'll be Anahuac Panther football. So Barrier coming under center. Fakes it to Corbett, but hands it off up the middle to Wilson. And Camden Wilson able to get forward for a gain of three. Back to the line quickly. Quick pass over to the far side. And it is caught. What a great catch by Talon Cunningham on the far sideline, even with the flags. And I thought it was pass interference what the flag came out for, but I think it's along a personal foul. We'll see who it goes against. As there was some extracurricular right after the catch. But we've seen it time and time again from Talon Cunningham here the last few weeks, making some very acrobatic catches, going up for it and coming down. Personal foul against Anahuac. So probably a little bit of jaw jacking, jacking going on as that will bring them all the way back after the wonderful catch made. And that's the kind of the useless penalties that we've been talking about. It will be a first down. However, it won't be close to the 45. Their ball is placed around the 28. So personal foul brings it back to the 37, let's call it now. First and 10 Panthers. Barrier handing off up the middle to Corbett. Corbett spinning out of the first level, trying to chug way forward. They're going to give him forward progress for a gain of almost five. Let's call it four. And there's another flag. See what the call is. Two thirty-four remaining in the first half. Currently it would be second and six, depending on the call. Personal foul this time against Kirbyville. First down, Anahuac. So that's a 15-yard variety which will place the ball now at the 47. And they better move the uh, chains on the opposite sideline down there. Currently the ball sits right at the 47. It's interesting. Maybe I just got a bad angle on it, but it looks to me like that. Yeah, they're going to have to move it back. They're about a yard shy. Shotgun, Barrier looking to pass. Over the middle to Bailey, and it's caught. Close to the first down marker. He's going to have enough for it. Move the chains once again, Robert Bailey. for the reception and into Wildcat territory once again is the Panthers. Clock continues to run, two minutes now remaining. Pitch to Corbett this time. Corbett looking to the far side, turns the corner, flag down on the play. So it's coming from the backfield. It's probably gonna be a hold on the Panthers, so it's gonna come back. Would have been a gain of nine for Corbett. However, the hold That's what it is, holding against the Panthers. So 
So after the five-yard penalty, ball placed at the 46. It'll be first down and 15 with 156 remaining in the first half. Pistol this time. Puts Corbett in motion, fakes it to him, goes to the other side, hits what I think is Coates on the far side, waiting to see who it was to come up with it. And it is. It's Quandre Coates on the reception, getting the penalty yardage by, back plus some. Call that a gain of nine and bring up second down, a gain of eight, second down and seven. Pistol once again. Barrier looking to pass. Rolling to his right. Gets rid of it. He's got Coates. Coates makes a move. Goes back to the inside. He's inside the 20. Got one man to beat. 10. And hit into the end zone. Touchdown, Quandre Coates. So great effort there after the catch for Coates to break it back toward the middle and then all the way to the near side down here to get it into the end zone. Kick is up by Cabrera through the uprights and it is good. So with just over a minute remaining here in the first half, the Anahuac Panthers push forward. 30 to nothing over the Kirbyville Wildcats on your Oak Island Double Value Turkey Shoot scoreboard. We'll be back right after this message on Anahuac Sports Live. Kick is away from Cabrera, filled it at the 24. And hard to bring down and finally hit at the 40. Is number 23 on the return, Jackson. I'm not going to mess up his last name. <laughs> so good field position starting out for the Wildcats there. And a good return will bring it out to the 43-yard line. 55 seconds remaining in the first half of play. I want to thank our second quarter sponsor. It's Jerry Seafood Incorporated, 136 County Road, County Dock Road in Anahuac, Texas. Actually, it's in Smith Point, 409-355-2243. So Huffman under center. Going to fake it, back to pass, steps up in the pocket. Scrambling now and met by Dye. And also Jonathan Cooper in the backfield for a loss of four. Second down and 14. Now under 30 seconds. Play clock at 40. We'll see if they want to try and get it one more playoff before we go into halftime. And don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. During halftime, we'll have both performances from each school's marching band as they get ready to go to their region UIL marching contests. And Kirbyville will elect to take it into the locker room. So after the first half, the Anahuac Panthers 
able to be all on top, 30 to nothing here at Wildcat Stadium. We're going to take a minute and a half break, but we'll be back with the band performances right after this. You're watching Anahuac Sports Live. Anahuac Sports Live is brought to you by Anahuac Florist. Anahuac National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Capital Farm Credit. Community Christian Fellowship Church. Chambers County Abstract Company. Coastal Field Services, LLC. Four Corner Tires. Gator Garage. Jerry Seafood Incorporated. Julia Luna Real Estate. AMAC Services. Porter's Wild Game Processing and Alligator Farm. Rebecca Lynn Photography. Amber Villarreal, Insurance Agent with State Farm. Third Coast Martial Arts. The Oak Island Double Bayou VFD Turkey Shoot. Small Key Insurance Agency. Title Services Incorporated. Trinity Bay RV Park and Lodging. Turan Lawn Care. Hillary Otto, Insurance Agent with Texas Farm Bureau. Turn Two Specialty Companies. And Wilcox Drugstore in Anawa.
marching band. The band is under the field direction of drum majors Brielle Christensen, Pablo Salazar, and Kaylee Perez. Color guard is led by Captain Yvette Garcia and co-captain Savannah Desmond. Color guard sponsor is Mrs. Jennifer Bogey. Directors for the band are Mr. Cody Cunningham, Mr. Morgan Contreras, and Mr. Aaron Porter. And this week's Marcher of the Week is Nancy Miranda. Tonight the band will be performing their 2022 UIL Marching Show, Immortal Beloved. Soloist for tonight is Tyler Farrow. Drum majors, you may begin when your band is ready.
And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Anawak Sports Live. Sorry to cut the uh, Curryville marching band short, but we're going to go over a few things from this far in the football game on the Wilcox Drugstore Halftime Show. Uh, so far here in Curryville, the Anawak Panthers all over the Wildcats, 30 to nothing during halftime as uh, – it has mostly been a balanced attack from the Anahuac Panther offense, lining Corbett with two touchdowns, as well as Brady Barrier with a quarterback sneak in for one touchdown and Quandre Coates for one as well. Um, like I said, a more balanced attack tonight. The run game has been more effective for the Panthers, definitely. Uh, a few penalties here and there. One personal foul call that uh, could have been avoided. However, the Anahuac Panthers able to uh, move the football up and down the field at will against the Wildcat defense. As for the Wildcats, they're unable to get much of a rhythm going. Uh, they had one possession where they got into Anahuac territory in the second quarter, but a uh, fourth down turnover to the Panthers, which resulted in a score, was their only true drive for their offense of the night. Some scores around the area. Uh, Hampshire Finette leading West Orange Shark Stark 13 to 7 at the half. Um, Harden Jefferson and Liberty 22 to 21. Harden leading it. Close game over there in Liberty. East Chambers beating Buna 21 to 7 at half. Orangefield all over Tarkington 40 to nothing. Woodville and Cold Spring playing at Cold Spring. Uh, 12 to 8 Woodville, closer game than I thought it would be. Um, Newton beating Hemp Hill currently 28 to nothing at halftime. Let's see if I can't get some a little bit further out. Looks like New Caney's beating Conroe 36 to seven. Clear Lake is trailing Clearbrook 13 to 10. Pasadena trailing Deer Park in the third quarter 44 to nothing. And bear with me here as I sift through some of these. and a bunch of scores that y'all probably do not care about. But anyway, um, it shows East Chambers and Buna still in the second quarter. I haven't quite gotten halftime. Probably hasn't updated yet, but East Chambers currently leading 14-7. to seven. Uh, Don't forget next week, ladies and gentlemen, East Chambers comes to town for homecoming for the Swamp Bowl of 2022. And be sure to be getting in to the gate early as we'll be giving away 300 rally towels on the home side stands. I was seeing if I can get a couple more scores for you. But, however, ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate everybody sticking through as we are getting set here to get started with the second half of play here at Wildcat Stadium. We'll be take one more break, and we'll be back right after this on Anahuac Sports Live. Hello, my name is Mark Poggles, and I'm the pastor at Community Christian Fellowship Church in Oak Island, Texas. I would like to personally invite you to join us for Bible study during the week and our church services on Sunday morning. We have a nursery for the little ones and our church family will greet you with a smile on their face and a loving heart. Come and celebrate with us as we study God's word and give him all the praise and thanks he deserves. Hope to see you there. Take care and God bless. Go Panthers! 1948, Wilcox Drugstore has been the Anahuac area's most experienced and trusted pharmacy. Continuing its long-lasting reputation for personal attention to all your medical needs, Wilcox Drugstore offers counsel, refills, transfers, compounding, flu shots, and delivery. Visit pharmacist Dave Wilcox and his experienced staff today at 1208 Miller Street in Anahuac or call 409-267-6141. Wilcox Drugstore, delivering solutions, delivering confidence.
And welcome back to Anawak Sports Live. I want to thank our halftime sponsor, Wilcox Drugstore in Anawak. Be sure to go and visit them at 1208 Miller Street in Anawak, as you just heard on their commercial, 409-267-6141. Appreciate Dave, Dave Wilcox and all of his staff for supporting Anawak Sports Live and all of our sponsors. Because if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be able to bring you week in and week out coverage for free on YouTube. And we also couldn't be doing it without all of our donors, all the loyal fans from Anawak and abroad. If you'd like to donate to the channel, you can go to Venmo at Anawak Sports Live, Cash App, dollar sign Anawak Sports Live, or get the PayPal link in the video description. We appreciate everybody's support so that we can continue to travel and bring you free broadcasts of Friday Night Lights. Cabrera with a kick away, fielded inside the 20. And that's Mahathe. He's going to make a couple of moves, makes one man miss, gets through another one. He's past the 40 and pushed out of bounds finally by Cabrera, close to midfield. They're actually going to say he stepped out earlier than that and place the ball at the 45. So good start for the Kirbyville Wildcats as Mahathe was able to get him a good return on that kickoff. As Huffman brings his offense back onto the field to see if they can't get some sort of momentum going. So Huffman under center, Alfred and Mahathe gives it to Alfred. Alfred runs into the first line of defenders and able to get about four yards on the carry. So I said in the pregame, Alfred and uh, Mahathe, both very hard runners. They definitely fight for every single yard that they get, and they're difficult to bring down. So second down and six from the 47. Fakes the pitch to the, to the left side, gives it to Alfred. He's across midfield for another three yards to bring up third down. Give him four yards, actually. It'd be well, three would be third down and four. Myers to the far side. Sends a man in motion. Is going to pitch it to Mahathe this time. Alfred with the block out front. He's got the first down. As Mahathe able to gain five on the play. And we'll move the chains for the Wildcats. So it definitely looks like the Wildcats went back into the locker room and sticking what worked with them in the first half as they were running the ball pretty effectively with Mahathe. And they're into Anahuac territory for the second time tonight. So the sophomore is going to be in the shotgun this time, Mahathe and Alfred to his left and right. Snap is back, looking to pass is Huffman. Met quickly and dropped, incomplete to his intended target, I think. Looking for the number, kind of bunched up there. That's Ryan Nation, who was unable to haul it in. Huffman not been able to complete a pass yet. 
as he has been under pressure the times that he has attempted. He'll come back under center this time with Alfred the lone back. Fakes it to him. Back to pass, rolling right. Got a man wide open onto the near side. That's Alfred. He's inside the 20. Still on his feet and out of bounds at the 22. And another first down for the Wildcats. So great misdirection play there to hit Alfred out here in the flat. First completion for Huffman. So first and 10 from the Anwak Panther 22 yard line. Approaching eight minutes left in the third quarter. Shotgun again. Huffman looking to pass again. Steps up in the pocket. Let's it go to the corner of the end zone. He's got Mahathay at the corner, but he is just outside of the paint to the back of the end zone. But Mahathay was pretty much uncovered. And he had a few steps out of the end zone before he was able to haul it in, bring up second down and 10. So second and 10 from the Panther 23. Two wide this time. Shotgun formation again with Huffman. He's going to look to pass again. Looking to his left. Looking for the other corner. Covered by Garrett Dye. Turns around and bats away. So good coverage there by Garrett Dye to get the ball out of the hands of Mahathay, the intended target. And it is a, there was a flag on the play. I couldn't see what the call was, but it, it's declined. Or at least I thought it was declined the way that the ref was signaling. So yeah, it was declined. It'll be third and 10. Kirbyville passing a little bit more now. I mentioned earlier that they were going back with the run, but they have yet to do so when they, on the last few plays. Under center is Huffman this time. Going to fake it to Alfred, rolling to his right, letting it go to Mahathay. Mahathay tries to get a hand on it incomplete as they keep trying to take a shot at the corners, and it's just not happening. Fourth down coming for, Wild, for the Wildcats. And you can only assume that they will try to go for the end zone once again. As to get the first down, they'd have to get to the 12-yard line of the Panthers. So far, the Panther secondary able to cover pretty well against the surprise passing that the Wildcats have been doing so far in the first or in the second half. 6:42 remaining in the third quarter. Going to give it to Mahathay. Mahathay is going to toss it back to Huffman. Huffman is caught but and going to gain about four, but that will turn the ball over Panther football. So the halfback pass not tricking the Anahuac Panther defense as they were able to catch Huffman on the far side and get the ball back with six and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. So two backs. It is a blitz from the Wildcats, and as the ball went to Cunningham, 
And I'm not sure, I couldn't see what exactly happened. But that is a loss on the play as the Wildcat blitz effective and the Panthers lose what looks like about six yards on the play. We'll call it five. Yep, loss of five, second down and 15. So maybe a little trickery on that play. Again, hard to see at this angle. Shotgun formation, three wide. Barry looking pass, gets rid of the football quickly and hits a target in the back as the blitz was on once again and Barrier ended up on his back. So third and long, deep in their own territory are the Panthers. Five and a half minutes. Now I don't know why the clock is continuing to run on an incomplete pass. Unless they decided for a running clock here in the second half. Only thing I can think of. But it is continuing to wind down. Five minutes now remaining in the third. Coates, Cunningham, and Bailey, the wide receivers. Pistol formation, flag on the play. As the play clock, I think, expired. And before the play clock expired, a timeout being able to to get it away on the Anahuac Panther side. That'll be their first. We'll take it with them. We'll be back right here after this on Anahuac Sports Live. Whatever it is you wrangle, whatever seeds you sow, no matter what you nurture or what you choose to grow, at Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, we're proud to protect all Texans. Third down and 15 from the Panther 12-yard line. Shotgun formation. Barrier looking to pass. Gets rid of it. Sets up the screen to Corbett. Corbett's got some blockers in front of him. He looks to get close to the first down. Marker out of bounds on the far sideline. Looks like he did get enough. As... Looking to see if everybody's okay on the far sideline as that was a hard, hard run and collision down there. Hope everybody's okay. Moving the chains for Anahuac was Landon Corbett after a gain of about 16 yards. Ball now at the 30. Blitz coming and a handoff up the middle to Wilson. Wilson able to gain seven. Actually, they backed it up, give him six. So gain of six, pass to Corbett out here in the near side, inside the numbers, and able to gain a couple. So gain of two for Corbett as they rush back to the line. Two back set again, Corbett and Wilson. Barrier fakes it to Wilson, gives it to Corbett. Corbett able to lunge a little bit forward, tackled at the hills, but enough for the first down. We'll move the chains again for the Panthers. Under three minutes now remaining in the third quarter. I do believe that they did decide on a running clock, but I can't confirm that quite yet. 
First and ten from the Panther 42. Corbett the lone back this time. Pitches it to him, looking for room to the far side. Got a couple of blockers in front of him, gets through, tripped up and still on his feet, falling forward to the first down marker. And it is enough, another 10 yards for Landon. And another first down. So inside Kirbyville territory once again. Ball placed at the 48. I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Whether you're an Anahuac or Kirbyville fan, we appreciate everyone watching on our YouTube channel. If you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. And don't forget the notification bell while you're there to know when, every time that we go live. Brady fakes the pitch, looking to pass. Over the middle and almost picked off. And that was number five, Brian Melvin. I mean, Barrier threw it right at him. Must not have seen him as he was under pressure in the backfield from the Kirbyville Blitz. As Brady Barrier's only had one interception this year. And that was almost his second. And I can only assume with that incompletion in the clock run, they did decide for a running clock in the second half. Trips to the near side. Pistol formation for Barrier. Looking to pass, and he's hit hard in the backfield. Ball's holding the ground, still loose, and it looks like to be it's covered by Kirbyville. And it is. So the blitz for Kirbyville, getting into the backfield, sacking and knocking the ball loose. And that was number 34, J.C. White, creating all of the commotion in the Panther backfield. But the Kirbyville Wildcats are going to take over in Panther territory with very good field position at the 45-yard line. The Anahuac's first turnover of the football game tonight, getting a lot more pressure on the freshman this half. 125 remaining in the third. Shotgun formation for Kirbyville. Puts Alfred on his right hand side. Mahathe in motion. Quarterback keeper Huffman going to take it too close to the 40. And they will give him five yards second down and five. So an update in Liberty. Liberty going ahead of Harden Jefferson, 28 to 22. Still a close game. Hampshire Fanat leading West Orange Shark, 13 to 7. A lot lower scoring game than I anticipated for that particular one. Orangefield all over targeting still, 46 to nothing. And Woodville beating Cold Spring, 18 to 8. Shotgun formation again for Huffman. Huffman under pressure and hit hard in the backfield by K. Dye. Garrett Dye. See, I'm going to mess that up a lot this year, I can tell you that much. But K. Dye in the backfield with a big hit and a big sack for the Anahuac Panther defense. Going to be a loss of five on the play, third down and ten. Definitely going to go on the TikTok highlight wheel this <laughs> this week as that will bring an end to the third quarter. So on your Oak Island Double Bayou Turkey Shoot scoreboard, it is the Anahuac Panthers 30, Kirbyville nothing. And we'll be back for the fourth and final qu quarter right after this on Anahuac Sports Live. From custom processing, professional guided hunts, high tanning, and gator merchandise, Porter's Processing and Alligator Farm offers a personal experience like no other. Locally owned and operated in Anahuac, Texas since 1987, Porter's has been Southeast Texas' premier choice for any hunting adventure need. Now offering full service processing of gator, deer, beef, hogs, and other wild game, make Porter's Processing this hunting season's one-stop shop. Visit them today at portersprocessing.com or call 409-267-8413.
Again, ladies and gentlemen, next Friday night when East Chambers comes to Anahuac for homecoming, the Swamp Bowl 2022 will be giving away 300 rally towels at the home side stands. Be sure to get there early to get your hands on one of the rally towels. If you've already got a rally towel from us, please bring it with you Friday night so we can fill the stands with the Anahuac Sports Live rally towels. Huffman looking to pass, got some Mahathe. Mahathe met quickly, and the whistle blown dead. Going to give him forward progress to the 41, I believe. It's actually going to be a, yeah, a gain of four. And that's fourth down and six. As the offense continues to stay on the field. The Wildcats definitely not afraid to go for it. They've done so, I believe, four times, converting on two of them. As Huffman comes back under center, Alfred the lone back. Going to fake it to Alfred, faking it to Mahathe, looking to pass, lets it go, and he's got a receiver, threw it up and broken up by Brooks Henneke on the far side. And that's going to be a turnover on Downs Panther football. Intended receiver Zion Myers for the Wildcats. And it'll be first and 10 for, Pan for the Panthers at the 41. So pretty good field position for their second possession. Their first possession stalled out pretty well as a sack fumble and recovery by the Wildcats on the previous possession. Corbett the lone bat pitching it to him. Spins out of one and gets to the front line. And they're going to give him forward progress, give him two yards Make it one. Bring up second down and nine. So Panthers definitely electing to keep it on the ground for the remainder of this ball game. Want to shout out to our third quarter sponsor, Anahuac National Bank, 801 Ross Sterling in Anahuac, 409-267-3106. You can go visit them at anbank.net and they are member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Pitch to Corbett. Corbett looking for some room and he doesn't get any. He's met immediately as the whistle blew and no flags for, and there's a flag because there's some extracurricular going on. And that was after the play was blown dead. Currently it is a loss, and it's probably another useless penalty against the Panthers if I was just guessing. And it is going against the Panthers. And it is unsportsmanlike conduct. And like I said, the, that those type of penalties have got to cease. That's going to be a 15-yarder. And that's going to bring up second down and forever. Dang, they're backing it up all the way where it, from where it occurred. That's going to put them back at the 20-yard line. Just inside, maybe they might be at the 19. They'd have to get all the way to the 51. So second down and 31 yards. Three wide, pistol formation. Barrier, high snap. Got it, flag down on the play. Looking for Coates. Coates has got it caught on the far sideline. We're going to have to see what the flag is about. It's on the far sideline. And it's probably false start. No, it's offsides against Curryville. Going to be declined as a huge gain there 
by Coates. They're going to place the ball at the 45, so a 25-yard catch from Barrier to Coates will bring up fourth down. And looks like six to go. Don't see the punting unit coming out for the Panthers. Approaching nine minutes left in the ball game. Play clock at 15, definitely taking their time. And most likely gonna have to take a timeout. And that's what they're gonna do. So the Anahuac Panthers take their second timeout of the second half. And we're gonna take it with them. We'll be back right after this. Don't go anywhere. We'll have the remainder of the fourth quarter right here on Anahuac Sports Live. Building a new home? Does your driveway need that long overdue facelift? Or are you just looking to finally get your lot cleared and ready to build something great? Look no further and trust the locally owned and operated professionals at Title Services Incorporated. No need to hire multiple contractors. Title Services does all phases of residential and commercial land clearing, house pads, ponds, dirt and rock delivery, and demolition. Call for a free estimate, 409-267-1057, or visit them on Facebook at Title Services, Inc. Fourth down and six from the Panther 45. Pistol formation, three wide. Snap is back. Barrier looking for Coates. Coates tries to catch it. He thinks he's got some in. We've got a flag coming in from the secondary. Coates had a great catch. And a perfectly placed ball. And it looks like it's going to go against Anahuac. So still in fourth down and six. It's offensive pass interference against the Panthers. I don't, not quite sure if uh, Coates pushed off as he was trying to catch that ball, or what the case may have been. But instead of a first down, that will back the Panthers back up. And it's going to be fourth down and 16 from where they're placing the ball. Now he's keeping on going back. So ball placed at the 30. They'd have to get 21 yards. They're going to have to punt it away here. So Della O set to kick it away. Puts it up, high kick, not far. Fair caught, catch called. And <laughs> almost had a big mistake there. Uh, the return man, 21, Brent Garner, uh, called for a fair catch and then got a hand on it right at the last second to fall down. And the Wildcats will take over on their own 40-yard line. All three timeouts remaining for Kirbyville. 8-15 remaining in the ball game. Wildcats having no choice but to air the football out to try and make something happen here. As Nation lines up here on the near side, Alfred the single back fakes to him. Looks over to the right and batted away by Garrett Dye. Garrett Dye having a big presence on the Anahuac Panther defense tonight with a big sack earlier in that batted football to make it incomplete. Second down and 10. So 
So under eight minutes, clock continuing to run. Huffman in the shotgun once again. Three wide, actually four wide. Gets rid of it, and it's batted away this time by Robert Bailey in the front line from the defensive end position. So another batted ball, two downs, two batted balls, and a bring up third, down and 10 from the Curryville 41. Seven minutes now left. Huffman bringing in the call from the sideline. So shotgun again, four wide. Looking for Mahathay, just going to lob it up there. Looks like intercepted. And that is Javion West with the interception for the Panthers as the defense coming up once again. And the Panthers will get the ball back with 6.23 remaining in the fourth quarter. Just heard a final out of Hemp Hill. The Newton Eagles coming away with a win, 34 to nothing. And that game, yes, it has gone final. And also the Woodville Cold Spring Oakhurst game was went final, 18 to eight. Woodville beating the Trojans. Pass to uh, Corbett as he's brought down hard on the near sideline out of bounds. Clock continuing to run because we do have a running clock here in the second half. As that was able to move the chains. And the ball is placed at the Panther 47-yard line. Pistol formation trips to the far side. Sends Wilson in motion. He's going to pass to him. Wilson trying to get some room on the far side and out of bounds and brought down hard. Wondering where the flag is on that particular play, where it should have been. That was definitely late hit after the play, and there's a flag here on the near side. So enough for the first down, depending on what this flag is down here on the near sideline. Clock stop at 4.59. So I got a flag on the far sideline as well. And if there is not a personal foul on that call on the far sideline, there is something seriously wrong. Officials talking about it. We're going to keep it here, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank our fourth quarter sponsor, Swanky Insurance Agent. Give Todd Swanky a call, 281-798-1624. And you can visit them at swankyinsurance.com. And thank Todd Swanky and Swanky Insurance Agency. That was going against Curryville. It was a personal foul. So they should get the first down wherever it went out of bounds plus some. It had looked to me like Wilson got to the 45 and it should have been an additional 15 yards from that point. 
And they're still talking about it. Right now, the first down marker, or the, the down marker is at the 46. Still talking about it are the officials. And I'm not sure what there is to talk about because if it's a personal foul against Curryville and it was called after the play, then it shouldn't have been an additional 15 yards from where the play went out of bounds. Now Curryville's head coach talking to the White Hat about the specifics. 4.59 remaining in the fourth quarter. It doesn't look like they're moving anything. Play clock has been started. Still some discussion on the Anahuac Panthers sideline. Okay, so now they're moving it. The ball will be placed at the 41. First and 10, Anahuac. As they come back to the line, Wilson the lone back. Barrier, going to give it to him. Wilson up the middle, looking for room to run. He's got away from one, got away from another. A flag on the play, fighting his way forward to the first down marker. As we'll see what the flag is about now. As we haven't seen a whole lot of flags in the first half of football. And now we're seeing quite a few of them. So it's either holding, and it is, holding against Anahuac. So that'll erase the 10-yard gain from Wilson. Back him up 10 yards, first down and make that five yards, excuse me. I guess from where, actually they got it placed at the 52. So I want to say it's first down and 17. Fakes it to Wilson, rolling right his barrier, stepping up, passing, Cunningham caught at the 30. He's got the first down and brought down at the 30, at the 28. So another great pass and catch from a barrier to Cunningham. And we'll move the chains once again for the Panthers. So another 20 yard pass for Cunningham. He's coming off one of his best games last week and having a heck of a game tonight. And a shout-out to Alex Altram, who would normally be keeping track of the stats tonight. But we'll have updated stats for you next week at the Swamp Bowl during the pregame. Don't want to miss any of that. 7 o'clock pregame show next Friday night. Dello and Wilson in the backfield. Gives it to Wilson. Wilson up the middle. Gets to the 25-yard line. That'll be a gain of five, second down and five. Approaching three minutes now left in the football game. Panthers taking their time getting the plays in. And rightfully so, as probably one more first down will do it here in Kirbyville. Wilson the lone back three wide. Hands it to him. Got blockers in front of him. Makes a cut inside. Spins away inside the 20. And that's going to be enough for the first down, and that will do it. Here at Wildcat Stadium. Again, want to thank everybody for joining us. Don't go anywhere. We'll have a short post-game show. As the pitches to Delo this time. Dello looking to try to get away from some defenders, able to gain four. 
as we get to two minutes left in the fourth quarter. Panthers looking to probably put another six here on, on the scoreboard before they end the game. And the reason being there were some questionable things happening down on the far sideline as it's handed off up the middle to Wilson. Wilson still on his feet. As the play's blown dead, they'll give him forward momentum for about two yards. And that's third down and five. As play is whistled, blown dead, timeout called by Kirbyville. 131 remaining here at Wildcat Stadium. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be uh, doing the post-game show. Trinity Bay RV Park post-game show, where I won't have very many stats, but I'll give you an update on all of the uh, area scores as I have them on the website here. And we'll go over next week as well and what to expect from East Chambers. Remind everybody that we are giving away our 300 rally towels next week. So all of the Anahuac Panther fans, please get to the stadium earlier as we'll be handing them out right at the home side stands. And if you have any Anahuac Sports Live rally towels from last year or this year, be sure to bring them next Friday night. We want to be sure to fill the stands next week for homecoming as East Chambers comes to town. They're going to give it to Delo this time. Flags on the play. And another timeout. No, <laughs> I thought it was the way he was signaling, but it's going to be a false start against the Anahuac. We'll back him up, and it'll be third down and 10. Minute 27 to go here in the fourth quarter. As Barrier comes back under center. Going to give it to Delo again. Delo looking to try to get away from that front line and doesn't. Able to fall forward for a yard maybe. As one more play. And a kneel down will be the end of it. Fourth down and nine. And he's going to try a Cabrera field goal here. Actually, the first time we've seen an actual field goal attempt from the Panthers. Ball is placed at the 25. It'll be a 30-yard field goal, and he, Cabrera gets way under it. And it's actually being caught by Alfred, I think, there to try and return it. for. And he's knocked out of bounds with 20 seconds to go here in the ball game. So the field goal attempt is no good. As Cabrera just got a little bit too much under it. And it was able to fall right into the hands of Alfred. Again, thank you to our scoreboard sponsor, the Oak Island Double Bayou Volunteer Fire Department 50th Annual Turkey Shoot, October 15th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. They'll be at the Double Bayou Community Building on that Saturday. You can visit them on Facebook at the Oak Island Double Bayou VFD. Or you can give them a call 409-277-3345 to get more information on the turkey shoot. So one last shot for Curryville out of the shotgun, throwing it up again in JV on West. Picked off by... That's Brooks Henneke. He's going to take it all the way to the house unless he can be got in the ball's in. He's listed at the one. Oh, my gosh. He tried to spin out of one tackle. It would have been in for six. But as he spin, the helmet got on the football and coughed it up. At the three-yard line with five seconds to go in the ball game. 
So I fully expect with that turnover and Brooks Henneke's third interception on the year will be it for the ball game after the kneel down here. So inside the five, expecting a kneel down. As victory formation for the Panthers. Snap back, kneel down by Barrier, and that will be the end of the ball game where the Anahuac Panthers have toppled the Kirbyville Wildcats 30 to nothing here at Wildcat Stadium. And ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank everybody for joining us here tonight. We'll be back here shortly with the Trinity Bay RV Park post game show. I'll go over some scores in the area and uh, give my final thoughts on, the on tonight and uh, give you a little bit of a preview of what to expect for homecoming for Swamp Bowl 2022, East Chambers versus Anahuac. We'll be back right after this on Anahuac Sports Live. Anahuac Sports Live is brought to you by Anahuac Florist. Anahuac National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Capital Farm Credit, Community Christian Fellowship Church, Chambers County Abstract Company, Coastal Field Services LLC, Four Corner Tires, Gator Garage, Jerry Seafood Incorporated, Julia Luna Real Estate, KMAX Services, Porter's Wild Game Processing and Alligator Farm. Rebecca Lynn Photography. Amber Villarreal, Insurance Agent with State Farm. Third Coast Martial Arts. The Oak Island Double Bayou VFD Turkey Shoot. Swanky Insurance Agency. Title Services Incorporated. Trinity Bay RV Park and Lodging. Turan Lawn Care. Hillary Otto, insurance agent with Texas Farm Bureau. Turn Two Specialty Companies. And Wilcox Drugstore in Anahuac. Anahuac Sports Live is brought to you by Anahuac Florist. Anahuac National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Capital Farm Credit, Community Christian Fellowship Church, Chambers County Abstract. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Trinity Bay RV Park postgame show. Trent Hart, Terry Fortenberry here from Wildcat Stadium, where it has gone final. The Anahuac Panthers have defeated the Wildcats 30 to nothing as the Anahuac Panther offense able to find their footing again this week after coming off a tough loss last week putting up 30 points, having a really balanced attack, getting the run game established, and the defense playing lights out tonight as they were able to stop the double-headed monster of the Wildcats. But uh, definitely Alfred and uh, Mahathe did a great job for the Wildcats tonight, as well as number five, Bron Melvin on their defense. And I want to shout out to Alex Altrum, who is unable to be with us here tonight. He'll be back with us next week for the Swamp Bowl in Anahuac as East Chambers comes down to town for homecoming. Some scores around the area. Let me refresh my screen here. <clears throat> Currently in the third quarter, Hampshire Finette leading West Orange Stark 19-13. Liberty is leading Harden Jefferson 35 to 22 in the fourth quarter. East Chambers is uh, over Buna currently 34 to 20 there in the third quarter. Orangefield has defeated Tarkington 46 to nothing. Again, Woodville beating Cold Spring Old Co Old Spring Oakhurst 18 to eight. Shout out to my good friend Craig Irwin over there in 59 in sports. Covering that game tonight for Cold Spring. Newton has beaten Hittenpill 34 to nothing. 
See if I can scroll through some of these to get you some other scores around. Well, it's not one an update for me tonight, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, we want to we appreciate every single one of you joining us here tonight. I'm glad that we didn't have any interruptions working off a cell phone signal. Um, be sure to join us next week. Again, we'll be giving away 300 rally towels on the home stand side. So be sure to get there early if you have a rally towel that you've gotten from us from last year or this year. Be sure to bring them with you next Friday night. We want to fill the stands with the rally towels and show up in force as we prepare for the Swamp Bowl 2022 East Chambers versus Anahuac. Currently Anahuac trailing East Chambers in the all-time matchup and has not beat East Chambers since 2016. So the Anahuac Panthers looking to finally get that win over Winnie here next week as they'll be hosting them for their homecoming game. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, for Terry Fortenberry, my broadcast partner, Alex Altram, I'm Trent Hart. Don't forget to join us next week, and don't forget to tell somebody you love them. We'll see you next week on Anahuac Sports Live.